welcome to the vlog. This is the recap of my experience with the Philippine Cycling Festival Gravel Race. You know, when I told people in Clark that I was from Cebu, I was met with surprise. You flew in for this? That's what people ask me. To me, it was a no-brainer to come back for the PCF Gravel Race. I was here last year and it was so much fun. Also, frankly, the races in Clark are probably the easiest races for me to join in terms of logistics. I don't need to rent a car. I don't need to drive anywhere. I don't need to worry about further travel. Just arrive at the airport, take a cab to the hotel. That's it. Easy peasy. So racing off-road in new places is such a great experience. A lot of people agree. I believe there were about 600 racers in the PCF gravel race. I still wish more people would try it, specifically people in Cebu. I hope uh, event organizers in Cebu, that's where I'm from, I hope they start looking into mixed terrain races. They don't need to call it a gravel race, a mixed terrain race. Like, I like how the PCF organized the race. There were different age categories and also different categories for gravel and mountain bikes. So they just separated the two categories but still had the same route personally i don't care that much what people ride to be honest so you can just have the age cats and you can just let people bring whatever bike they decide to bring for the course and just race and the other thing that i liked how the pcf organized the race this year is that the category started in waves which meant that there was no craziness compared to last year. Last year, it was a mass start. Everybody started at the same time. It was pretty hectic because there was also this, anyway, this long neutral start. I won't get into it. This year, you know, they had the younger guys start first and then it got older and older and then the women towards the end. So it, it was a lot safer. It felt safer to race. So my goals for the race were pretty modest. Uh, first, avoid crashing prevent cramping and maintain a solid effort throughout the race let's see if I was able to do that so in the beginning of the race I managed to stick with the front group honestly they weren't going super fast I stayed in the middle of the pack and I was even able to freewheel a lot so I was pretty happy with myself because if I could conserve as much energy as possible before things got tough then that made my chances better when things would start to string out. So after the first road section, there's a sharp left turn, and then that's the start of the off-road section. And this is where I was caught off guard. So the problem with not having track read the route was I was very unfamiliar with the route. I mean, the start we did last year, but you know, that was a year ago. <laughs> and. So since I was unfamiliar, I found myself in the wrong spot once we hit the left turn. The sand also caused a crash that happened right in front of me. So that set me back a little bit further. So the deep sand naturally broke the pack down to solo riders because the sand was tough. It was really hard to get through. I just kept trying to channel my inner Matthew Vanderpoel. <laughs> so the trick with sand is to use an easier gearing. The moment you stop pedaling is when the sand stops the bike. So if you keep pedaling and you keep the momentum going, the bike will find its way through. So whenever I saw sand, I made it a point to downshift to keep the momentum going and to keep the back wheel spinning. At this point, I was still feeling really, really good, so I chased. I find that I ride better when I'm trying to chase people in front of me, so I found this part really, really fun. Honestly, I had no idea who was fast or not. Apart from the guys that I met in Italy, shout out to Team ABC, a lot of those guys were in my age category, those guys are fast. But aside from them, I had no idea who was fast, so I just surfed through wheels. I would, I would uh, find somebody who was going at a good speed, I would hide behind them, I'd rest a little bit, and then when I felt like I could pace faster, I would overtake. Eventually, I found myself with number 267. His name is Mark. I met him after the race. 
we worked together and he even hung around these really strong mountain bikers as they passed us. One interesting thing about the course was that the off-road sections were actually pretty technical. If you take away the road sections, there's an argument to be made that the course favored mountain bikers because they were just rolling through everything while we had to pick our lines for the off-road sections. So it was really kind of difficult staying on the wheel of the MTB guys, especially once it started getting technical. At this point, we finally caught up with some of the top guys in our age group. This wasn't the lead group. The lead group was probably a few minutes ahead, but this was the chase group. It was a struggle to get up to these guys, but I was still feeling pretty good. I made sure to stick with them so I could rest a little bit, and uh, we followed them for a long time, and eventually I was feeling good enough to pull. So then I took a pull, it was a road section, and I was in front, I was feeling good. And then all of a sudden I heard this like loud sound. Bzzz! My saddlebag fell onto the, well, it, it buzzed on the rear wheel. So I didn't know what happened. I thought that the wheel was rubbing onto the frame. And then one of the riders behind shouted, saddlebag. So I stopped tried to fix the saddlebag and at that point they had overtaken me already. So I chased again. But they dropped me at a fast road section and they were going pretty fast. And the other problem was at this time there were a lot less wheels to hang on to. I feel like my advantage as a cyclist for this race was in the off-road sections because I felt like I was pretty comfortable in the off-road sections while in the road sections I think those guys were much faster than me uh, generally speaking so I was hoping to have a group to hang on to eventually I found a few wheels to draft but there was only one problem the guys coming through at this point, we're the really, really strong athletes from the older categories. So first was the strong mountain biker who I drafted all the way to the highway. We had a good pace going. Then in the highway, we were going at a pretty good speed. At some point, a tricycle overtook us. And then the mountain biker sprinted hard to the tricycle. I saw him sprint, so I sprinted right behind him. And... Before I knew it, we were going pretty fast in the highway behind a tricycle. We were going fast enough that I did not dare get my hands off my handlebars to press record on the GoPro. I eventually lost him on the climb after the highway. One hour, 26 minutes in, pretty tired. But then, the next rider who came along was this strong gravel cyclist who told me to hop on. So I drafted him through most of the new Clark City section. And he was strong, man. Like, he was basically solo like me, but ripping through the road section. I could tell he was a real racer too. Because there was a water station before the turnaround. And he knew that we were going to pass that water station again. So... When he saw the water station, he pulled out his empty water bottle, his empty water bottle, and he threw it at the, threw it at the lady and asked her to fill it up and that he would be back to get it. And it was such a good move that I wanted to do the same thing, but at that point we had already passed the water station and we were already heading towards the turnaround. So. Yeah, veteran moves, man. Ah. Then after the turnaround, I started to lose my legs, man. Like the power in my legs were dying. Like I probably was taking on a lot more than I could chew. Like I probably was behind the mountain biker and eventually this, this fast gravel cyclist. I was probably pushing harder than I thought than I should have. So at this point, I couldn't push any power. So I hopped out the, 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 the gravy train of that fast gravel cyclist and I was solo again. 
At this point, it was the two hour mark of the race and the start of the major climbs. I felt so dead. Very out of gas. <laughs> I was going up the climbs and the thought of walking crept into my mind like the only way I was able to stay on the bike was I told myself that I could rest during the downhill. The problem was I didn't know when the downhill would start but never mind eventually I got over the climbs. It's the climb. I'm having trouble just staying on the bike. I am fucked. <sighs> But after the climbs, I had nothing left. Then a peculiar thing happened. The chase group, the guys I was with originally, overtook me, which meant they were behind me. So I was confused. So I asked one of them, did you guys stop? They did not stop. After the race, I looked at Strava to check what happened. Now. This might get me into some trouble, but I hope you'll appreciate the honesty. So it seems like I turned around in New Clark City early. I missed around three kilometers of the race. In my defense, I'm not familiar with the route at all. And it didn't make much difference. I had a, I had a little burst of energy after seeing the guys again. So I managed to hang with them for a little bit but I did not have much left in me. So as soon as there was a short climb, I was dropped from the group again. I should also mention that the sand really took a toll on my drivetrain. It was creaking like crazy. The whole ride after the sandy bit. So basically after the first hour or something, it was creaking like crazy. I wondered if I should have taken the one or two minutes to stop and apply chain lube on it. In retrospect, I think I should have, especially when I lost my legs. But you know, we're done with that. So I just kept going and the only time I put lube in was in the end when I finished. So at this point, my legs were gone. I was just happy to get closer and closer to the finish line. A few more riders even passed me. It's good, man. I'm so tired. And dead. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> Thanks, man. And I even had Buenas, short Buenas. conversations with them. But by the time I reached the finish line, I was solo. Okay. No Thank need you. to sprint. No need to go fast. I coasted through and I was done. Super dead, but super happy. The official results of the gravel race came out a few hours later, but they took the post down, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to the official results, but more or less I finished in 3 hours 11 minutes. But remember, I missed the 3 kilometer portion of the race, so you can take my time with a grain of salt. But you know what? I'll take it. I am happy with my effort, but there's definitely lots of room for improvement. So when I first traveled to the PCF by myself, at first I was bummed because this is like an event that would be fun to do with friends. But on the upside, I was free to just hang around the festival and just chill and, and talk to people who I normally wouldn't get to interact with. I didn't show it in any of the videos, but I met so many cool people. I think that was the best part, to be honest. Like right after the race, I hung out in the starting line for about three hours. I didn't want to go anywhere else because I needed to rest and I didn't really have anywhere else to rest. But also, I got to talk to so many people. It was so fun to hear their stories about their race and also share stories from my race. I think that's the best part of these long endurance events. Everyone. It doesn't matter where you finish, everyone has a story to tell. Whether you finish first or last, it doesn't matter at yeah. all. You get something out of the whole experience. Shout out to Cycling Chef. I have footage because of him. I forgot to bring the GoPro dongle to connect it to the bike, so he was a huge lifesaver. Shout out also to John John Bikes. Thank you for taking me in and treating me to a few beers with the RCC Manila crew. 
Shout out to Gerard in January. Thank you for hanging out post and pre race, just like in Italy. Also, thank you to my wife holding down the fort while I was away and for sponsoring my AXA travel insurance. I'll be honest with you, this helped ease my mind when I was traveling with the bike. You never know what might happen in transit. Also, thank you to my vlog sponsors, Curve Coffee, Fox Dance, and Villain. You've helped make trips like these possible. And lastly, thank you. Thank you to the to you, to you who are watching. You guys have made rides like these so much more enjoyable. It's uh, it's motivated me to put in the time to document the rides and to share it on YouTube. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you're just you're all helping the channel grow. So that's it. I hope you guys will stay on for the ride and will continue to listen to my stories. And uh, definitely we'll have more in the future. So no boring days. Please subscribe.